Okay guys, no long intros here. I'm gonna show you how you can use dynamic EQ sidechaining in FL Studio and why you should use it. So if we look at the FL Studio project, I have a kick drum and a bass line, and it sounds like this. As you might hear, they are clashing. They are like playing on top of each other in the low end, and I wanna get rid of that. So I wanna make room for the kick drum, so every time the kick drum plays, the kick drum is essentially gonna dock away some frequencies in the bass line. Because if we're using traditional side chaining, let me just show you on an EQ. If we're using traditional side chaining, we will dock down, reduce the volume of the entire frequency range. So every time the kick drum hits, the bass line is gonna be reduced throughout the whole frequency area. But by using dynamic EQ, we can actually select areas in the frequency range where we want to dock down the signal. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So to set this up, it's actually pretty simple. So as you can see here in my mixer, I have routed the kick drum and the bass line to a mixer channel. So in, for the kick drum, I have put up the plugin from FL Studio called Fruity Peak Controller. And this is essential to generate a signal that we can use in the EQ. So how to set this up quickly is for the bass, we're gonna set this to 50%. You can right click, type in value, and you can set it to 50% because we want it halfway. Then we have the volume knob, we're just gonna leave it as is, and the decay knob as well, just leave it as is. We're gonna tweak those later. So right now, we're just gonna close this down. Then we're gonna go into the baseline channel. I have loaded up the Fruity EQ2. And what we're gonna do right now, essentially, is that we're just gonna set the frequency band here, number one. We're just gonna set it to around, let's say, 150 hertz. This is a low shelf. We can just right click here and you can go to type and use low shelf. To me, I like to use a low shelf when I'm doing dynamic EQ sidechaining. So what we're gonna do right now is that we're gonna use the peak controller because when the peak controller is playing, let me just show you. This is basically generating the same waveform as the kick drum. And we're gonna use that to trigger the EQ. So if we go back to the Fruity EQ2 on the bass line, we can now go to band number one. This is the one over here. We're gonna right click on the gain knob here, the gain slider. Then we're gonna go down to link to controller. So there is a lot of information here. It's actually not that necessary. Just ignore all of this stuff up here. But what we're gonna do down here is that under internal controller, it should be set to none if you just load up the, the plugin, you can select the peak controller peak. And you can see this is the fruity peak controller that's on the kick drum channel. And we need to use the peak. We select that. And then this is really important for the mapping formula we, this is set to default and this doesn't work because if we keep it on the default here that basically means every time the kick drum hits the the, the band in the in the frequency is going to be boosted it's going to be put up in volume and we don't want to do that we're going to do the opposite so we're going to reduce the volume so that's why we just select the inverted instead we hit accept and if i play the track right now, the kick and the bass line together, you should see that this band here, this frequency band, is being ducked down. Pretty cool. It works really well. And now you can actually go to the kick drum and you can select the Fruity Peak controller. Let me just have both of these plugins on display. So right now we have the possibility to tweak some settings in the Fruity P controller on the kick drum to determine how this is gonna behave, the band in the frequency uh, area here. So if we just, the decay here, if we have a slow decay, this is gonna be really slow at going up again. So when we reduce the volume, it's going to slowly get back to zero here, but that's maybe a little bit too slow. So we don't get that desired pumping effect. So if we increase the decay a little bit, you can see like that the band is reacting 
faster. So it's just a matter of setting this to taste where it fits the sidechain pumping effect that you want to have for your track. For me, it was pretty nice at around here. And then there is the other important knob here, which is the volume knob. This basically determines like how low the, the band is being docked down. This is really great too if you want to have like a really heavy sidechain effect you can just crank this volume up or if you want to have like a more subtle effect you can just have it at a, a smaller volume level basically be careful not to crank up these knobs too much because it can affect the the eq here in a negative way it can cause some pops some clicks some crackle um, i experienced it when i was actually putting the frequency range of the, the band one that we are um, sidechaining way up, it started to create some like crackling noise that was not really pleasant. Like this stuff, it's not, not what you want. And if you were to like do this, you should perhaps just use a normal sidechain and sidechain the whole signal. So this is this, it sounds nicer in this like lower area from like, for me, like 150 Hertz. It sounds really nice without any clicks and pops. So just bear that in mind if you're using this technique. So this is actually how you set up dynamic EQ in FL Studio and using side chaining. So I'm actually gonna show you a bonus tip that you can use in combination with this technique that we just used. So what we're gonna do right now is that we have, I have created a side chain trigger this is the pattern up here. This is just playing the same pattern as the kick drum. And the sound that I'm using is actually a rim shot. Right now there is no sound. And that's because if we go to the mixer channel, you can see it's routed to this channel three here, but the volume is not being routed to the master out. And that's because I don't want it to generate any sound. This is the rim shot. I would rather use it as a side chaining trigger input. And that's what I've done here in the baseline. I have gone down here and select the side chain to this track on the baseline together with the fruity EQ that we used before I have added a fruity limiter and this fruity limiter is being used to side chain the whole signal and the reason why I like to use this approach is because when we are using the dynamic EQ side chaining in the low end there can be some upper frequencies in the baseline that might be conflicting with the kick drum and I can just reduce those a little bit, catching those peaks and those transient with this limiter that's just doing normal side chaining. So what we're gonna do to set this up is that we go to compressor mode. For side chaining, it's important that we select the side chain trigger, and then we just set the release to around here. This is just to taste like how, like how long the, the docking should be to get back to zero again. We put attack all the way down, sustain all the way down. We put the ratio all the way up. We add a little bit of knee, so it's softened a little bit. And then the threshold is just being reduced to like how much sighting you actually want. So if I play it, I can, I now play around with the threshold and you can see the effect. I think this is really cool because as you can see here, these, this purple area here is what's being reduced by the compressor, by the limiter. And this is just really great to just catch those transients that could conflict with the, the kick drum. By using both of these techniques, you can really create some cool side chaining and you get more control over your side chaining and really make room for the kick and the bass line in your mix. And I really encourage you to try this out. It's rather simple to set up, so as you can see, I have the MIDI pattern up here with the sidechain trigger, I have my kick drum, and I have my bass line. And then using the, the routing in the mixer channel, just having one like channel for each of these elements, and then setting the, the, the routing up. So it's not no like rocket science, it's just some small techniques that can help you. And yeah, that's basically what I do most of the times. Sometimes you don't need to use like the, the, the EQ, dynamic EQ approach. You could just use the normal like fruity limiter side chaining or other side chaining tools. 
it's all a matter of the context of your song and the mix that you are doing. Don't just think that you should do the same approach all the time. It's a matter of the song, basically. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, it means so much to me if you would smash that like button or even subscribe to the channel. And if you are looking for some more FL Studio tips and tricks, I think you should watch this video up here next. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.